Um, so welcome, thank you for coming. Um, my name's Greg Willis and I work in Technology Alliances at Data IQ. Um, and today I'm really just going to be talking about some thoughts that I have on reliability and resiliency in data science processes, um, or alternatively, family as an analogy for data science platforms. Um, so this kind of started a few months ago when I was with my family. I have a young baby, just turned one actually. I was with my wife and my baby. We were in town, we were out shopping. Uh, and my wife said to me, she wants to go off and get her nails done. So I said, that's fine. You know, that's cool. I can look after the baby. I'll sit in a cafe and I'll, I'll get a cup of tea. I've got my book with me. Um, it'll be fine. Like my baby will sit in the buggy. If he gets hungry, I'll give him some milk and, and everything will be cool. So I had this kind of idyllic vision in my head about how that was going to turn out. And um, basically, as soon as my wife walked away, my baby started getting a bit uncomfortable. And I thought, oh, no. So I picked him up and I was holding him. And I realized that not only had he gone to toilet, but he'd actually had diarrhea. And there was a very real danger that there's going to be a huge mess everywhere. Um, so I'm sat there sort of holding my baby, panicking, thinking, you know, how am I going to deal with this? I've got to get some wet wipes or some napkins or something to, to stop this from turning into a bigger mess. But I can't put him down, otherwise this is going to get even worse. So um, the thought that went through my head at this point was that all parents or people that have had experience looking after children must instinctively understand about chaos engineering because I'm essentially holding a chaos monkey here, this kind of random, unpredictable thing that's going to destroy all of my best laid plans. Um, so this got me thinking about reliability and resiliency in general and specifically around data science, which is a topic that I don't really hear too much uh, when I'm talking to, to organizations. I mean, these days people talk about how we need to make sure we're taking our experiments and deploying them into operational systems to make sure we're getting value from them but not necessarily in a sustainable way, in a reliable way. Um, so the questions that I was asking myself is, what is it um, that's actually causing a, a lack of resiliency or unreliability in data science processes? And what are the things that we need to consider at a minimum to make sure that we are getting continuous and st sustainable value from our data science processes? Um, so originally thinking back, data scientists were kind of seen as uh, as frontiers people working on the boundaries of the known world, um, seeking value, um, pushing into the unknown, and still some, to some extent uh, today. And that necessarily involves a certain amount of freedom and agility, but also a little bit of chaos and, and conflict in that process. Um, obviously, most organizations today realize the value of data science processes, and they want to adopt them or, or develop their, their capabilities but they want to do it on their, on their own terms. They want to do it according to their own organizational structure, their own organizational policies. So they want less of the conflict and the, and the chaos that's involved in that. And this reminds me of this triptych by the Dutch artist Hieronymus Bosch, um, which is a, a very interesting picture at a high level. It's made up of three panels. And the, the panel on the left is kind of like that initial um, organization that has the innocent idea about developing their data science capabilities. And the middle one is kind of how they see it, their vision. It's that naive vision of everything's going to be great and everyone's working together. There's going to be lots of fun and it'll be very artistic and creative. Um, but usually it ends up more like the third panel, the kind of unexpected result where it's a little bit chaotic, it's disjointed, you have everybody doing their own thing. And I don't even know what that's a metaphor of, so I'm just going to skip over that one. Um, so some of the words that you could use to describe this kind of undesirable end state are things like freedom, agility, visibility. Um, it's ad hoc. It's siloed. It's chaotic. It's conflicting, unregulated, and sometimes uh, vulnerable as well. And the opposite of that is obviously something that's restricted, rigid, opaque, planned, uh, centralized, ordered, aligned, governed, and secure. And this actually fits to the two opposite extremes of the spectrum of data science platforms, right? So on one side, you can have something which is completely unstructured, and it has a lot of benefits, like the freedom and the agility, the visibility, in the sense that you decide what you put into that, so you can, you can see what you're doing. It's kind of a white box approach, but it also has some serious drawbacks. Um, and on the other side, you have a completely structured program, which is, uh, has lots of benefits, but it also has some, some serious downsides as well. And at a high level, this is really a trade-off between two things. On one side, you have breadth of possibilities, and on the other, you have the probability of actually realizing some kind of very specific or narrow value. So 
the more, the closer you get to a very structured program, the higher the probability that you will be able to deliver a value in a very specific sense, um, but in a very narrow sense as well. And on the other side, with a very unstructured platform, you have a lot of possibilities, but probably you're decreasing the overall chance of actually completing or, or, or getting to your goal. And as a parent, you have some choices about what kinds of toys you buy for your children. Um, and I always think of a very unstructured platform as kind of like a big box of Lego pieces. Um, you can do pretty much whatever you want with it. Um, the possibilities are almost endless. Um, and that's very tempting for a parent because you always start from that position of kind of naivety and innocence where you, you imagine something really cool. You imagine that Lego street with different shops on it and people on a bicycle and flowers in the windows and things like that. Everything's very harmonious and, and cool and creative. Um, but the result is usually that you end up with lots of small individual pieces or fighting amongst themselves. And if you give that same box of Lego pieces to different groups of children, you'll normally get a very similar result, even if the individual pieces are, are actually different. Um, so on the opposite side, a very structured platform is kind of like a, a pre-built toy, like a toy car or something like that. Um, the wheels don't turn, the windscreen wipers don't work, you can't open and close the door. But if you push it forward, it goes forward. If you push it back, it goes backwards. It's very reliable, it's very predictable, um, but it's kind of limited. But it is very resilient. You can throw it down the stairs or, or smash it on the floor and it will keep going forwards and backwards. Um, but these are obviously the two extreme points on this spectrum, and it is a spectrum. So obviously the ideal thing to do would be to find a sweet spot, something in the middle, a compromise, which takes the best aspects from, from both sides. So a semi-structured platform. And this I kind of think of like a, a Lego Technic set, where you get a starting position, you get some instructions, you get some pre-built parts like the tires or maybe the chassis. Um, but you also have the flexibility to change the color, to maybe remove the roof and turn it into a convertible or something like that. And so this is also like a, a family in a way. You have some individual building blocks, different types of building blocks that you can use to make a, a very structured and organized base that provides security. Um, and you use that base to then go on and to create new assets, uh, different types of assets, and you manage those assets through their lifetime. And ultimately, those assets go on to be, to be valuable and successful, happy and wealthy. And that whole process is, is therefore successful because of the base that you've, built, uh, that you've built it on. And as I found out in the cafe when I was with my son, it's very hard to be successful if you don't have that base. So that's kind of how families can be an analogy for, for data science platforms or for having that necessary base in place. So if we think specifically of data science processes, in order to be successful, you need to have uh, resiliency. And for resiliency, you need it to be centralized and ordered, aligned, governed, and secure. But without losing the things that make those data science processes value in the first place, the freedom, the agility, the visibility. Um, so in summary, the conclusion is that often a lack of reliability and resiliency in, in data science processes usually stems from a certain amount of lack of, uh, of structure in the underlying platform. However, on the other side, too much structure will limit the scope of the values that you can actually deliver. So you need to find a, a sweet spot which actually combines the best of both worlds. So an idealized semi-structured platform should give you the flexibility to experiment with different methods, technologies, tools, languages, etc. Change management supporting governance, control, auditability for different types of assets. Collaboration and inclusiveness for different user profiles with both visual and code interfaces that work together in an integrated way. As well as operationalization so that you can move from one stage to the next in a planned, organized and structured way. And if you've thought about all of that and you've worked out where you fit on that spectrum, because there's not a right or wrong answer, everybody's gonna fit in a slightly different place, then you probably deserve to sit down and have a cup of tea and read your book uh, in the knowledge that you've at least started on that journey to creating more sustainable, reliable data science processes. And that's it from me. Thank you very much. So please come and visit us at our booth, which is uh, number 104 and we'd be delighted to go into more detail about Data IQ's approach to data science platforms.
Awesome. Thank you very much, Greg. Uh, were there any questions also prior to visiting in the booth? Yeah. Data IQ is a data science platform. So Data IQ has its own approach to how we think data science platforms should be built. Um, and 15 minutes is a very short amount of time to go into that. So please come along and visit us at our booth. We can give you a demo, talk about the details of, of how we approach data science. Awesome. Anything else? Great. Let's thank you. Oh. oh, one more question. It's either wherever you want to deploy it. So flexibility. Yep. Yeah, and we got that for you. Awesome. Let's thank uh, Greg again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.